Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So, I had a very uh, something interesting experience uh, last week. <laughs> I call it I went to the hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a very strong word. That's the way I felt. So, last week, uh, whole week, I was traveling in central Pennsylvania and working with a uh, couple of colleges and few churches and also I went to the one of the biggest uh, prison in uh, central Pennsylvania so that's my first experience I have been in the you know the couple of small prisons but this is a huge one big one and there were 2400 inmates all men so you know you know when you get into the prison it's very difficult to go in because they are checking and before I go there, you know, the most of my friends said, you know, Bhante is a really difficult experience. All the doors are opening, clicking, and all those things. So I was preparing myself, and I went there. But that experience doesn't bother me at all. For the closing doors, opening doors, checking, I thought that's the procedure. is all right. So after going in, so the, all the people uh, who want to practice meditation, the prisoners, they came. They have a big chapel, old chapel. They have uh, 30, 40 uh, inmates came to the meditation. So it's a very sad and difficult experience for me. I try to stay calm and, and also I try to aware about my emotional uh, feelings and experiences and I did a really good job. So I talked to them, I gave with them a Dharma talk. They are wonderful practitioners. Right? They have, it's called the prison Sangha. They have a meditation group inside the prison. So when I listen to their stories, the stories are very difficult. Stories, you know, what they did, why they end up in the prison. Right? One man, um, his name is Kevin, he is the one teaching the meditation inside the prison. He's a prisoner too. He's the one teaching the meditation. So he's lifetime in the prison. Right? He doesn't know when he's going out. No clue. So when I, with him, when he's around, when I talk to him, I felt great energy, so much uh, compassion and love around him. He's like a shining one. Right? Then I thought I really want to know about this person a little bit more because he's teaching meditation, lifetime in the prison. He's smiling and I can see his happiness all over the place. And um, Then I talked to him, Kevin, I would like to know more about you. You know, Tell me if you would like to share with me. Then he said, now I'm tw more than 20 years maybe he's 30s, 20 years in the prison. Uh, one time he's murdered somebody. That's why he's end up in the prison. I cannot believe it. When I'm looking at him, I cannot believe it. He did that. Right? So then I ask him, how you feel right now about it? Then he said, I, I have, still I have guilt. I have pain when I think about it, you know, because now I'm really good practicing, a very strong. I consider myself Buddhist. Every day I'm practicing meditation, like one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. I feel this is my home. I don't have a chance anymore. That's the way I feel. But I try to maintain myself, uh, my practice, my good conduct. Uh, then I felt sad about him. I can see he did something bad. That's why he is having this punishment now, you know the prison life, no good food, and living in that, sh you know, the small room, no air, no windows, uh, damp, and he has his own shell, uh, he's living there, but he said, you know, sometimes it's difficult, difficult experience. Uh, he said, sometimes we don't get enough food, uh, sometimes they don't have all the funds to give us good food, like meat or something like that. Sometimes we eat more bread. 
That's the way they are doing it. Then I thought, you know, according to the karma or whatever we believe in Buddhist teaching, so that's the thing, that's the result. Now they are going through. No food, hard life and difficult, painful experience, no relative, lifetime in the present, right? Even that, you know, the good thing about the Buddha's teaching, Buddha always gave a second chance for the people. Now my feeling was, when I talked to that guy, Kevin, he's a good person now, but nobody accepts him as a good person. Right? He's the one teaching mindfulness meditation inside the prison. He's a good teacher. When he talks, when he doing things, I can see all the good energy and vibration around him, but he doesn't have a chance. But I cannot do anything for that. Right? I felt sad about it. So this is my point. So many people you know, they end up in the prison because of their negative uh, <coughs> emotional distraction, they couldn't control themselves. Then I asked that Kevin, and how it's happened? How it's happened? Why you murder somebody? So then he said, you know, Bhante, in that five minute, that's the message I want to give it. That five minute in my life, I couldn't control my feeling, my anger. That five minutes, within five minutes, all the things that happen, I kill somebody. So think about how difficult if you don't taking care of your emotional difficulties, that means rest of your life, you can be in trouble. Just five minutes, now whole time, whole his life is in the prison because of that five minutes. Sometimes we can do so many good things in our life, if you do a mistake, within next two minutes we are in trouble. So that means any time you lose your mindfulness practice, what will happen to your life? Then he said, if I knew the meditation, if I know the birth at that time, it's never happened to my life. He said, if I practice mindfulness at that time, how wonderful my life will be. Right? He, that's the thing he's worrying about. Why I didn't meet the Buddha like 20 years ago. But that five minutes, I forget everything. I couldn't control myself. I did that. Now he's regretting about himself and worrying and sad. And the message he gave it to me, he said, Bhante, now I am inside this prison. I cannot do anything. I know the good thing, I know the meditation, I know the practice, I know the teaching. He knows all the teaching. He has a wonderful knowledge about the teachings. Right? Because he's reading and reading and reading and reading. Then he said, Bhante, please do this for me. I asked what? Go home, go out of this prison today and talk to all the young people in this society. How difficult this prison life. Don't come to this world and talk about me and talk about my experience and tell them to take care of their life. So that's the thing he asked from me. Go and talk to people because you are a good ambassador to go and talk to and share with the, this wonderful wisdom with the people. So the next day, I had another presentation in McDaniel College in uh, University in Pennsylvania. When I was there in the classroom and talking to the young uh, you know, the people, and somebody asked me, according to the Buddhism, <laughs> how do you define the hell? Where is it? They asked, where is the hell, according to the Buddhism? I said, not far away, go to the Huntington prison. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, go to that place, you can experience that. Then I explained to people, if you want it, you can create it right now, right here, within five minutes. That hell experience. Okay. So my whole point, my teaching today, think about your practice more and more, and understand your emotions and your feelings, what is happening inside you. Mindfully, don't control them. Sometimes we try to control our emotions and things, it doesn't work either, right? According to the Buddha's teaching, what we have to do when we have some emotional difficulty, always we are reacting 
or we have to observe them. Think about that person, he reacted his emotions. Anger is an emotion. He couldn't control him, he did something negative in his life. <coughs> when we are practicing mindfulness, what exactly happening us, we are observing what is happening inside me. When you are experiencing anger, you have to observe that feeling. I am angry right now, I want to care about my feelings. <coughs> then I am observing, then you don't do anything negative. Right? So when you experience um, impatience, so then you have to experience that I am there right now. Be with it and don't do something negative with that. So think about that little time, five minutes of time, you cannot be patient. That's the thing, you know, within few seconds, you can get into the trouble if you lose this practice. Most of people, then I have so many other stories about inmates, right? Most of stories I experience why they are end up in the prison, they couldn't observe their emotions. They couldn't observe their emotions in that moment. How many people, all of us, going through the anger in this room? We all are going through the anger, right? When you, now you are trying to practice in meditation. Tell me, including myself, when you experience anger, that emotion, so far, as a meditation practice, and how do you deal with it? In that moment, how you feel about yourself? I saw the, all the 2400 people, they are beautiful people. But what happened to them? Can you experience that also outside of the prison in that moment? Right? We all do. How do you deal with that anger? You know, that emotional anger always going around in your life. Hmm? Any experience with anger? <laughs> <laughs> I know, you all do, right? It's a really good topic, you know? I know what I try to do now is when I can feel you know, my temper rising, mm -hmm. I stop and I breathe. Right. Stop. What's making me angry is, you know, take 30 seconds, concentrate on my breath. Right, right. And start feeling temper, start coming back down. Right. Think about the neg negative side of that. Right? <laughs> if people cannot take that 30 seconds to observe you, yeah, right? See, see that 30 seconds, if you go to the negative side, destroy all your life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Think about it. Take a very little time to do something good or bad, negative or positive. Any other experience about anger? How do you deal with it? That emotion, especially that emotion, because I felt so sad about the people, because most of people, they are in that experience because of that emotional anger. No anger? It's exhausting to carry it. Hmm? It's exhausting to carry it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very heavy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. Yes, anger is powerful, of course. Anger is powerful experience. That's not what, negative power. That's why people are doing something when they, it is powerful. And also loving kindness, also powerful. Sometime, you know, one time I remember somebody said, uh, anger is helpful. Somebody said, anger is helpful. I asked, how? In this group. Then he said, I can control the people. I can control the, my family. I can control my children when I'm, I'm angry. Right? Then he said, it is powerful. I said, why you feel anger is powerful? That's the only thing you know. Right? We are so used to, to get angry. So if you know the power of love or kindness, then you understand it totally differently. So what you have to develop now, when you experience anger, you have to understand, yes, it is a powerful, it's heavy. But you have to develop opposite of that. Then you experience power of love, power of loving kindness. I was just thinking about my daughter and, you know, a teenager, 19s. Uh, she just lets her clothes build up on the bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... 
her mother kept coming up to me in that two week time and said, talk to her, get her to put her clothes away. Mm -hmm. And I and I heard it up to here. <laughs> and um, I told her, I said, Chelsea, I need you to go down and put your clothes away. Mm -hmm. And she said, I don't have to, it's my room. Mm -hmm. So I sent them outside of kids. And I went down there and I took apart her bed. Mm -hmm. And I took it out of her room and I put the clothes in the middle. It made her mad. But it was better for me to be able to talk to her about it or to take some actions versus um, arguing back and forth and getting angry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I just took my little way of getting my point across. Mm -hmm. And she understood it. She wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally fine. When something happens like that, in the, think about in the beginning how we react. We are emotional. Having that emotional experience inside right after your wife talked to her, you know, about her, then you became emotional. Then you thought, I'm the father, I want to take the action. Right? Then emotionally, you involved the whole case. Then she felt that emotion, she felt the an anger, she doesn't want to listen to you. So when I experience something, <laughs> this is the way I'm dealing with, right? So I'm living with other two brother monks, right? We have some, you know, some conflict, some, you know, not bad anything. So something I don't like, right? So if I experience something like that, I just observe it myself. I take a maybe another week. I stay and focus on it and I stay another week. And then everybody's calm and good mood. Then I start to talk about it. I smile, I say something. That, sometimes when I say that, I said, you know, this is the way I see it, but maybe I'm wrong. If you see something wrong in me, this is the time you can tell me. Right? Then we all can correct ourselves. So then they are listening to that. Otherwise, in the moment when I see that, I become emotional then that action doesn't work. Then it's an anger experience. Everybody gets angry. That's the way I'm dealing with it now. But before, like 10 years ago, I'm not like that. I am just jump into the situation and yell at people or something like that. Now I don't do it because I'm getting more mindful about my emotions. So it's helped a lot. Right? Because most of the time I try to deal with, with love and kindness. Because I know how much I love myself. <laughs> Any other experience? It used to drive me crazy when I was young. And my mother would say that um, use your anger, anger is energy, mm -hmm. and use that anger, shift it to change. That anger comes from scare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and when I feel scared or fearful, then I can build all kinds of stories about justifying why right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I should have Right, right, right. But there's a lot of truth in what she was saying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If if we take, if I take the time to observe, right, that's the exactly. Hard part. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I said we don't have that time. We don't like to take that time for ourselves. <clears throat> that's the thing I experience. Is all those people in the prison, in that moment, they didn't have that time to experience what is happening inside me. They just react. Right? Like, sometimes it's like, like animal nature. You know, the word Buddha used called the Miga Sanya. That means even being human, we have animal nature too. Right? So I think when we are reacting right away, that's the word Buddha said, the animal nature. Right? We don't know. We are just doing it. So, you know, when you are mindful, that means we are coming to the real, true human nature. We are observing ourselves. Yes. I have a question, Bhante. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had uh, someone attacking you uh, verbally and emotionally mm -hmm. and wouldn't stop? Mm -hmm. Something that went on over time, either for hours mm -hmm. or for days, where you had to be confronted with this person really attacking you? Mm -hmm. And if so, how did you handle that? This is the thing. First, we have to listen to that person. <laughs> you know, 
without taking anything personally just listen to that person first but sometimes it's really he doesn't stop you know then we have to do something right for our safety otherwise you know the first thing i am doing i'm listening to that person it doesn't matter how much he's insult me say something bad about me just listen to him because he's angry so i have to understand this moment this person is not in the calm state of mind if you can understand that then you can handle that easily right so when somebody is you know the yelling at you say, say something verbally we don't have patience that because you feel or i feel he is attacking to me right it's hurt my ego right who i am right then you want to say something right so in that moment as a meditation practice and you know, what we have to do listen to that person let him to you know the take everything out first then if you see a right moment to talk then you can talk otherwise walk away but later you can get the time but some people very difficult to control they are keep doing keep saying things right if you really feel something danger towards you then you have to take some action call the police or something like that seeking some help right some people cannot control at all because they don't know i remember you told us a story about how there was a member of a different sangha who right, right. verbally attacked mm-hmm. you and Um, <laughs> yes. Later he apologized right, to right. you, but you said to him, "Right, don't him, come and do it every day." If you do it again. I'm right? calling nine one one. Nine one one. Right. I said. I said that. You know, because he verbally attacked to me. I was listening. I was calm. I didn't say anything. But later he apologized. I said, "Great, you did in the morning. Whatever you did, something bad you did to yourself. Now you are apologizing. Now you are doing again to yourself. Not for me." but i said thank you so much for apologizing but again and again you are keep doing the same thing do you know what i am going to do he said what i am going to call 911 he was shocked because he never expect that answer from me so then again people have to understand right so try if you cannot do something then seek the help <laughs> she was getting verbally attacked from him mm-hmm. um and she was scrubbing with him she was, she couldn't leave you know there was a patient there and everything and um he was you know saying she wasn't doing things right and everything and she just turned to him and it was just the perfect thing she just said you are really cute you know that and, <laughs> and he just laughed and giggled and then it was fine after that. right everything right right it was fine after mm-hmm. that she just totally turned it around mm-hmm. and it was like the perfect she thing said to him was going to be He was verbally attacking her and she just turned around to him, you know, she was taking it and taking it and then she says, "You know, you are really cute." <laughs> <laughs> and it just totally turned it around and he started to laugh then and kind of, you know, a couple of us did too that were in the room and so it all turned it around and everything was fine. Mhm. Mm-hmm. So she just decreased it just by a couple words, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's good. Anything? Yeah, I I used to work in the mental health field. Mm-hmm. deal with the rape people mm-hmm. quite a, quite a bit mm-hmm. and um through training and just through experience I've always mm-hmm. found to is finding something to agree with mm-hmm. the person that is angry at you mm-hmm. if you can find something that you can say yes oh wow that is that helps disarm them mm-hmm. and it helps you get to a place where you can negotiate right you know, right right right, right. Mm-hmm. so kind of having some empathy or sympathy for mm-hmm. the person that's angry right right exactly yeah, instead of being Yeah. which is hard. <laughs> I think now uh we all are practicing meditation, right? So we can see it different way when something happen like that, negative things, you know, somebody is angry, verbally abusing. So think right away you have to understand I am the person who is practicing meditation. Being in that point face to that, then it will be very different experience. Otherwise, you know, if you are like same like other person, what is the difference? then you cannot call it you are meditating <laughs> even you are trying right so my point we all are trying to practice meditation look at those kind of negative experiences you know in a positive way because you can do it like that right talking to people too before 
actually going through with the action that you think you want to do is also helpful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So getting the opinions of everybody else, expressing the fact that you're angry mm -hmm. and this is really bothering you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, sometimes will take away the energy and right. lower it to a point where mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm, actually mm -hmm. then go ahead and fix the problem. Right, exactly. You know, think about all the ideas you gave me. I can see mindfulness is involved, right? Mm -hmm. Mindfulness practice is there. Whatever you said, mindfulness is there. That's the key. Keep practicing mindfulness. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. We are inside the real prison or we are outside. We can be our own prisoners. Right? We can live like prison outside of the prison. Right? That experience. Um, this week, I had a, a situation with my, my job. I'm a music teacher, and uh, I had a parent who was very upset with me over something that I could mm -hmm. not control. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to basically take up my entire day mm -hmm. of calling me and emailing and all this. And I finally had to remind myself that I was not there for just her mm -hmm. or just for her child, mm -hmm. that I was there for a lot of other students. Mm -hmm. And by putting all of this energy into that, mm -hmm. I was taking away my energy mm -hmm. from helping these other students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had to actually go home and say to myself, tomorrow, I'm not going to deal with this. Right. She can call, she can do, but I cannot put any more of my energy into her tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. cannot do this. And I actually, you know, it it really helped me mm -hmm. realizing that, that when you're angry, you're taking away positive energy yes. and that energy that you have to help other, other people, people, to help uh, do other things, mm -hmm. and putting it all in this negative place mm -hmm. to a negative person that right. has affected you. Effect. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything? It's interesting that we're talking about this this week. I just posted a quote from Viktor Frankl on my fridge, and I can't say it as eloquently as he, but he talks about the space of opportunity between when something happens and when we respond to something that happens mm -hmm. as being our opportunity for freedom. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, great. Oh, yeah. Really yes, exactly. It's really fit into this discussion. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> when I had uh, teenage children at home, I, uh, I always had trouble with how quickly I would respond to behaviors that I didn't think were acceptable. And I'd get advice like, oh, well, count to ten before you respond. <laughs> and I simply could not do it. Right. But what I found was that if I could just take a single breath, mm -hmm. There was a split second in there that mm -hmm. broke the rhythm of the mm -hmm. whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it changed my relationship with my children. Right, right. I mean, they're now in their 30s, but, uh, and I didn't kill anybody, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, right? How great it is. You know, I, once I remember one member of uh, the Blue Lotus community here, Woodstock, and she said uh, one time having really family issues with the children, husband and wife, and, you know, now they are sitting on the table and talking about the problem. Now everybody is yelling at each other and throwing the words and then she's coming to meditation right away. She said, breathe. <laughs> everybody was so quiet and calm. That's it. Think about it. Loudly she said, breathe. Think about it. even when he said, hear that word, everybody is calming down. That's the, that's the thing happened. Just breathe a few times. Right? It, it changed my whole relationship. Yes, with that's right. <laughs> You better take a deep breath to shout out him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, you know, you. <laughs> I just figured that they email them. Huh? I just figured the kids would email you back and you have to get back that way. Being young, older kids. Mm -hmm. <coughs>